Hey everyone, Seth at Hub City Vintage, and welcome back for part two of our Navigator Timer series. Uh, we're gonna pick up right where we left off on the last video, but before we do, I wanted to mention, I got so wrapped up in talking about the history of Navigator Timer and World Time 61 and 6217, that I completely forgot to mention part of the inspiration for doing this Navigator Timer series was Seiko's recent release of the new Five Sports GMT. I've seen it called SKX GMT and some of the marketing, but if you haven't seen those yet, they are pretty awesome. Uh, here's a couple of pictures. Uh, they have some great colorways. There's an orange style. I think if I were gonna choose one today, it would probably be the black and gray. I just love that monochromatic layout. But they're great looking watches, uh, a new sort of spin on SKX, and I'm glad to see that they're honoring that history. Uh, this is one of the top selling uh, wa divers watches of all time. And uh, people have been collectors and Seiko enthusiasts have been clamoring for Seiko to bring SKX back. And I think that was a pretty great way to do it uh, in a new GMT. Um, but if there's lots of articles to read about them. If you haven't seen them yet, you should definitely look into them. It would be a great companion piece to the uh, Navigator Timer you're going to want to now track down for yourself after after watching this one. Um, but just jumping right back into things, here we are on the train wheel side and things look much more familiar uh, as far as 61 series movements go. If you've seen 6106s uh, or anything similarly uh, broken down in the past, this is going to be basically identical. Uh, we can see our ratchet wheel here and our mainspring barrel. Um, and of course our barrel bridge and uh, train wheels and through this port here you can even see a leg of the hack lever. So let's uh, go ahead and just break this down, have a look at the movement components and then it'll be time to move on to getting them cleaned. I'm not sure if you can see but there's some kind of residue all over uh, the plates of this movement. It was on the calendar side as well, I imagine some sort of uh, cleaning product. Uh, or uh, I'm not sure, maybe from over oiling, who knows, but uh, it's important that you choose good cleaning solutions and uh, I obviously don't want to uh, contaminate my good cleaning solution with whatever is on here. So I'll likely clean these plates by hand first and then and then move them into the cleaner. But uh, well, a watch will always run best when everything is as clean as it can be and free of any sort of debris or film or residue and of course properly lubricated. Uh, but let's get this one taken down and we'll take a look at the whole thing. And with all the components removed, uh, we can take a look at the main plate here and also on the uh, barrel bridge. Both arbors look to be in really good shape, fortunately. Uh, no chamfering. Uh, I think the shake is going to be right where it needs to be for the mainspring barrel. Uh, but as I mentioned a minute ago about uh, the importance of cleaning, I'm going to try to show you this. I'm not sure if I'll be able to uh, get a good look at this escape wheel. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but there is some kind of fiber uh, that has wrapped around the post and gearing and teeth of the escape wheel. Um, there's a small black fiber. Let's see if we can get it to focus and show you. But, you know, I would not be surprised if one of the reasons that this uh, movement is in such good shape is that someone thought, oh, this watch just isn't running very well. And so I'm just not going to wear it. And a lot of that had to do with the fact that there is, I don't know if you can see that or not. If not, it's okay. Um, I'll try to get a close up picture of that um, fiber completely wrapped around that um, post there. But obviously that's going to slow the escape wheel up a bit and uh, cause and create tons of friction that otherwise would not be there and certainly affect the performance of this movement. 
but we'll get that all, all unwrapped from there um, before we get it in the cleaner. And let's back out here and take a larger look at things. So here is a good look at all of the components. Really all that's left to do is uh, take the mainspring out of the barrel, we'll give it a good once over and get it cleaned up. And uh, we'll get the barrel itself cleaned up, make sure there's no irregularities with the mainspring. Um, and get these parts in the cleaner. I don't see anything here that's of any concern. All the pivots look really good and the jewels, no cracks, chips, abrasions. As I mentioned, the uh, arbors on both the main plate and the barrel bridge look good too. This should be a stellar runner. It should run as good as it looks uh, when we're on the other side of this. Lastly, let's just take a look at the case components here. I'd like to take a closer look at the uh, internal bezel. I'll show you uh, how this one stacks up against a uh, later version with the one piece. In fact, I think I might even have one. I'll take a look uh, to show you the comparison. But as I mentioned, you know, the teeth on the uh, gear on the stem is going to interlock. Let's see, I think I can, let's get a closer look and I'll show you exactly how that uh, bezel works if you're curious. I think you can see, yep, there we go. So you can see uh, how the teeth line up just above the inside part of the crown tube there. And as the stem comes through, you can see that that gear is going to align with those teeth. And there is how the bezel rotation works. So if you come across one of these watches and uh, it says, hey, uh, the bezel isn't working. Uh, well, you have a pretty good idea. Uh, it can only be one of a couple of things. Either the stem gear is missing, which is uh, usually the case, um, but it is possible that these teeth, as this ring is just plastic, I'll show you as I'll, as I'll show you in a minute, um, they, can, they can become broken or damaged. And a lot of that uh, has to do with the fact that many times when people replace these uh, stems, and gears, they will, if the spring is missing or, or misshapen, they'll use a much heavier gauge spring that doesn't allow that same ease of movement as this lighter one does, and forcing that gear to mesh with those plastic teeth, and it's a metal gear, uh, it's pretty easy to damage those teeth, so something to keep in mind. All right, let's take this bezel off, and then we'll pop that crystal out and have a look at this inner bezel. And the rest of the case components. Here's our bezel, just a snap-on design. You can see there's some uh, grime, dirt, decades of whatever in there. Uh, we'll get that nice and cleaned up too. And uh, again, where it meets the case, you can see that's uh, more of the same there. Um, this crystal actually is in pretty good shape for its age. It looks to be the original. Um, but let's get that off of there and take a look at that inner bezel. Here's the upper portion of the internal bezel. If we turn it over, you can see, let's see if I can get it in the light there. Uh, there's a channel here and that mates with the keyed section of this. Maybe we'll back out a bit now. Um, the keyed section of this lower ring here. All of the teeth appear to be in good shape, nothing missing, not damaged. In fact, in fact, I don't even see much in the way of dirt or grime on the inside there. Uh, but as I mentioned, uh, these two pieces fit together like this. And then of course the tension ring on the inside of the crystal keeps everything pressed down into the channel on the case and holds it in place so that those two don't separate uh, mid-turn. And just to compare, here's an example of the later variant of that Navigator Timer 24-hour uh, ring. And you can see it's not nearly as attractive when there's all that missing paint. A couple of small, tiny chips is not so bad, but when large portions are missing like that, it's uh, really all I can see. Uh, but this is gonna be the latter one piece version and the teeth became, uh, it was an integrated design. So we don't have the separation of those two pieces. 
So not the same issues, but those earlier resist and proof models are almost always going to be two piece. Also, uh, that one is entirely plastic, the latter version, and this one has a, a metal upper, which is that I like the weight of that. I always like as, to have as much metal as possible and as little plastic, so um, there you go. All right, well, we're gonna get all of this cleaned up and have all of these parts ready to be reassembled, free of fibrous uh, hindrances and dirt and whatever residues. Uh, we're gonna get it all cleaned up and, and ready to be back to as close to like new as possible. Um, but just jumping right back into things, you can see uh, the dial cleaned up really nicely. There wasn't much to do here, but there was some dirt and uh, visible color in a few of the markers, the 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, and 2 o'clock. Uh, I was able to remove that grime from the surface of those markers, and you can see there really is no visible color there anymore. They're nice and bright white. Um, I didn't do anything to them other than just clean the surface of those markers. That's all original luminous material. Um, that dial is completely original. It just looks that good. Um, moving on to uh, the main plate, if you remember, there was a bit of a hazy sort of a film that was uh, kind of all over the, the plate on both sides that really, I was very happy that it cleaned up as well as it did. There's nothing like a fresh, uh, clean main plate to start things for reassembly. And all of the parts cleaned up just as well. Uh, this is gonna be a great movement. Very little wear here, as I mentioned before. No wear on the arbors on either the uh, main plate or the barrel bridge. Um, so we're gonna get some, uh, I'm pretty confident that we'll have some good performance out of this watch. And jumping right into the case components. Um, no concerns there really. It cleaned up very nicely. If you'll remember, there was some grime and uh, and so even some um, maybe a bits of uh, corrosion there that was visible around the outer edge of where the bezel meets the case. But unfortunately, if moisture is going to get trapped somewhere, it's usually going to be in those seams where case components meet. Uh, and that's going to be, of course, on the top, the outer edge of where the bezel snaps down onto the case. Moisture is going to get trapped there and can lead to some pitting or corrosion. But if you take a close look here, there's very little of that that's visible. Um, maybe one little bit of pitting right there on the outer edge there, but nothing that's going to prevent that case back or that case bezel from snapping down firmly here and, uh, and helping to hold our, our crystal in place and protect the outer edge of it. Um, so no no concerns there on the case back uh, or on the on the mid on the back of the mid case rather you can see again uh, this is going to be a place where moisture is going to get trapped um, and reside and cause pitting it, this is very common to see especially on this particular uh, case it's rare that I see one that doesn't have some pitting around that outer line you can see this seam here of where the case back would meet the mid case there's some pitting there but moisture is going to get trapped there but Fortunately for us, the gasket and case back did its job. There is no pitting or corrosion around that inside uh, line, that inside edge. It's just along the outer edge of where uh, the outside of the gasket would sit. Um, but just a tiny bit of pitting there, but nothing that's going to keep, keep us from uh, forming a nice tight seal once the new gasket's in place and the case back is tightened down. No issues with threading. Um, I don't see any missing metal there or thinning, no, no concerns here, and no concerns from the crown tube either. It's going to be a good case to house this very nice dial and very nice movement. Uh, jumping back in, as I mentioned before, um, our barrel arbors look great. All the jewels look great. Pivots on all of the wheels look great. Uh, this one's going to be a breeze. It should go back together very smoothly. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started, and uh, we'll stop at some various points and talk about things and and we'll go from there before i close up the mainstream barrel just wanted to show you it uh cleaned up beautifully i didn't see any concerns here um, no no problems with shape or uh, tension and uh, it is cleaned and back in a clean barrel this one should provide ample power to this watch for many more years to come
Before we install the balance, we'll move back over to the calendar side and uh, take care of a few things there. I've got to put the cap jewel in place and the die shock spring. Also, um, we'll put the keyless works back in place as well. Since we're at a good stopping point, that'll wrap things up for this video. We'll jump right back into the calendar side when we come back next week. In the meantime, use this break to check out, read up on, and of course drool over the new SKX GMT. And please leave a comment below if you have any thoughts about them that you'd like to share. We'd love to hear them. Congrats again to our Patreon contest winners. And if you'd like to get in on the next one, consider becoming a patron. It's just seven bucks a month for exclusive content, early looks at all of our inventory, and the occasional free watch. So thanks for watching, and we'll be back with more Navtimer goodness next time.